What do you think the ceiling is for the Miami Heat this season? Dude, the Heat are definitely kind of trying to sit back here and say, last season did not go the way that we had planned. We have re-signed our future in Bam Adebayo. This year we re-signed our leader in Jimmy Butler. We re-signed our sharpshooter, our go-to guy to get hot in Duncan Robinson. And we have now addressed the point guard position that has been lackluster for the past 10 plus years because obviously we know that the Miami Heat dynasty that ran through with LeBron James and Dwayne Wade did not necessarily have a point guard at the facilitator position with Mario Chalmers, Norris Cole, and a number of other players. So the signing of Goran Dragic a few years back when they went and made that big $90 million offer sheet was great at the time, but when you really look at it, he's not necessarily a true point guard as he is a scoring guard. Now Kyle Lowry is as well, But Kyle Lowry brings a lot of different things to the table. Championship pedigree, consistent three-point percentage, leadership, and just somebody that can facilitate now. Getting upwards in the later later ladder portion of his years in the league, I think that he's going to be able to take a lot of pressure off of Jimmy Butler, having to bring the ball up. I think he's going to be able to let Jimmy do what he needs to do on both ends. Obviously, on the defensive end is what Jimmy's known for. But... Jimmy has developed a, a, a mid-range game as well as his strength in attacking the basket and on the rebounding aspect as well. So he'll just have to kind of focus on doing what he used to do back in Chicago with the, what he did with Derrick Rose. But a lot less stress for him. Uh, Bam Adebayo will have a true point guard to kind of run through those pick-and-roll sets with him. Uh, I know Duncan Robinson is happy to have someone that's going to be able to bring the ball up and get him involved in the offense a little bit quicker. So as a whole, I really, really do see uh miami as a competitor next season obviously with a full off season of rest with a full off season uh incorporating uh practices and uh and camp to get those new acquisitions uh newly acclimated will be very very well for the franchise i think miami catapults themselves back into a top four top five seed i know last year they were a six kind of struggling on and off throughout the year but i do think that this year with the declining of the option of Andre Iguodala and being able to save that $15 million to spend towards the other players that they needed to re-sign or bring in, uh, Miami is no joke. That starting four is, uh, is, is pretty solid if you really, out, if you really throw out there. The, uh, also, the acquisition of P.J. Tucker. Uh, so, I mean, you guys starting at the one, uh, hopefully Kyle Lowry, Jimmy Butler at the two or the three, Duncan Robinson is probably going to start. Um, and then, obviously, Bam Adebayo at the five and P.J. Tucker at the four. So, I mean, like that's a pretty solid starting lineup if you really were to ask me in the Eastern Conference. I don't know if it's enough to compete for a championship, but I do think that they have improved dramatically from where they were last season. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. I think... And they also just signed Dwayne Dedman. Okay. So, the way that I currently see it is I think they could definitely be a top four team in the Eastern Conference. I, I'm a little bit skeptical about the Kyle Lowry acquisition simply because of his age. He's going to be 35 this season. He was dealing with some injuries last year since he only played 46 games. And, you know, statistically speaking, he did not have his best year last year. And I think with the way that I currently see, he's a 35 year old point guard. It's a three year deal. You know, by the end of the contract, he's going to be 38 years old. Now what comes along with that is like you mentioned a veteran presence, a true leader, a championship leader for this team. And you pair that alongside with Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo. I'm not going to say that it's like the big three of what LeBron James, Chris Bosh, and Dwayne Wade were, but this is a respectable big trio for Miami going into this season. We are forgetting Victor Oladipo on this roster. What do you mean we're forgetting Victor Oladipo? Victor's on this roster, and I didn't even remember. Like, I literally just saw a report that Houston is still absorbing that contract in terms of acquiring Daniel Tice. Guys, that's a whole different conversation with Daniel, but I totally forgot Victor was even on this roster because he missed pretty much not only the entire playoff, but, like, the the, the, the end of last season. Victor Oladipo, if he comes back healthy, starting at the two with Jimmy Butler, that's huge. Well, that was going to be something i was going to bring up but the fact of the matter is I, I can't really rely on victor oladipo's health that's the main concern with me no but i just forgot no it, no i mean it, it, it was a point that i was going to bring up but i have to see victor oladipo play consistently for that team just because let's be honest ever since he tore his quad when he was back with indiana 
He's never been the same. He can go out there and still have a decent game here and there, but it's not consistent. You know, so I think really the most important thing with Victor Oladipo is just to try to get some consistency on the court. That's what I want to see, at least, just because I know that he's capable of being a huge factor for Miami moving into this season. It's just I can't rely on him because of his health. And it kind of goes with the same thing with Kyle Lowry. So I think by and large, though, this was a move that is going to benefit Miami this year. And I do think that the acquisition of P.J. Tucker, I think by and large, that's more just for depth purposes. I mean, I saw P.J. Tucker throughout the entire playoff run where he was with Milwaukee. He was just a guy to basically go out there and foul people. He might hit an occasional bucket here and there, but he's pretty much just out there for depth purposes at this point. But look, you're getting a guy from a championship contending team in the Milwaukee Bucks uh, this past season. So I just don't necessarily see that as a bad thing. So maybe he can bring some of that over to Miami, but I still think that Miami is going to be a solid team going into this year. I'm not saying that they're going to be a number one or a number two seed this year. I think that's a little bit, too high of an expectation for this team, but they've got a very good shot of making the top four. When you got Jimmy Butler, who's one of the most dynamic players in the NBA, the fact that he can play solid defense on one end and can put up 18, 20, 25 points on a consistent basis. You know, you're not going to find too many players like that in the league. And, you know, as long as these guys can stay healthy, I think Miami could definitely be a contending team in the Eastern conference this year. They will be, have a much improved record from this past season, for sure.